what is up and welcome back guys so in today's video i'm going to be teaching you how to build this farmhouse concealment end table well what did you expect after the concealment coffee table build i had tons of requests for side tables that match so this is what i came up with and i'll be taking you step by step through this build all the way down to the painting and distressing techniques so the whole point of concealment furniture is to be able to hide anything that you would like in plain sight. It does not mean that it has to be firearms. It can be anything from money, passports, or even candy. So I always design my concealment builds as aesthetically pleasing, useful furniture. I just like to throw in a little surprise. So let's get started with this build. And as always, we're going to start with cutting our parts. And our parts will consist of just common construction grade material. So two by fours, two by sixes. I will throw a cut list into the description. And as always, if you are a plans in the hand type of person, I will drop those into my Etsy shop. The link will be in the description. And like I mentioned, I'm just using common construction grade material. That way everyone has access to it. But you can use any material that you would like for this build and build it in any style. The reason why I chose this X-Frame farmhouse is because it matched our other concealment table. And if you like these types of builds, I think that this is actually my fifth concealment build that I've done, so you can check out the others. So after our parts are cut, we are going to start the assembly of our two sides. And the sides are gonna be parts A, B, and C. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put pocket holes in the ends of the rails, which are parts B and C. I'm using Craig's foreman here, but you can do this with any pocket hole jig. And since our second side is identical, go ahead and prepare all of your parts. So with our parts cut and prepped, let's go ahead and start putting this together. And we're gonna start by attaching our bottom end rail B to the leg A. And I'm gonna attach the rail two and a half inches up the leg. Okay, I'm gonna pause it here just to show you my first mistake. Those pocket holes should be facing down because we want to hide them. I realize this in a minute, but just letting you know that no matter your skill level, you will have these happy little accidents in every build. And now we're gonna attach our end top rail part C. Oops, and if you notice, I'm turning this to its side. So this will actually be part of the apron for the table. And now I notice my mistake. Another mistake was drinking sweet tea while I'm trying to voice this over. So, sorry about that. You will not be getting any more of that irritating smacking sound like when someone's mouth's so dry that you just want to pour water down their throat. But anyway, now that I've fixed my mistake, we can go ahead and add our second leg. Just make sure that you're still leaving two and a half inch spacing from the bottom of the leg. And I'm going to bust myself out here, but does anyone else have this disgusting habit? Maybe it's some form of pica. You know how, like, Pregnant women crave dirt. Maybe I crave the taste of wood or metal. I don't know. And just a couple more screws and we are, oh, well, yeah, this is what I deal with. But you learn from your mistakes and you do it again, apparently. And then I realize this is not a magnetized bit and we can get back to work. So with our first side done, that's all we have to do is repeat these steps for our second side. The only difference will be the top rail placement. So I made the right side. So for the left side, just make sure to put the top rail on the left side. So with both sides done and only your stomach in the picture, you realize that you need to lose some weight and move on to installing our end rails. So for top rail F, we're gonna put a couple of pocket holes on each end. And for bottom rails D, we're actually gonna put a pocket hole on the top and the bottom. This will leave one pocket hole exposed, but we need it for the strength. So to hide that, I'll be putting plugs in these later. So first I'm going to install the top rail F. This will actually be the back of the table. And here's a little tip if your construction grade lumber has a little bit of a twist in it. You can take a clamp and actually use it to put some leverage in the direction that you need it. So now let's move on to installing our bottom rails D. These rails are the ones that will have the pocket holes in the top and the bottom that we will plug here in a minute. So if you've made it this far into the video, obviously you like a little something about it. So do not forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you decide to build this project, make sure to get some good pictures of it and send it to the brag board. The email address is in the description as well as instructions on how to get to the brag board to see what everyone else is creating. Yeah, definitely some odd form of pica. So with our bottom rails in place, this is where we are at. With our main frame built, everything else will move along a lot quicker. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a couple plugs into these holes and get ready to install front rail E. 
with everything set up for half of an inch I will be what uh, the last person to use this forgot to turn on the vac while the accessory was installed clogging everything up but don't sweat the small stuff and put a couple pocket holes in each end and we will install this rail from the top because we will eventually have a tabletop to cover it up here's a quick tip if you are installing pocket holes and half inch material use pan head screws the heads are a lot smaller so the rim of the screw will not protrude from the pocket hole and next we're going to cut our four cross parts G this is going to make our X frame with our saw set at 50 degrees we're going to cut our ends and each one of these pieces will be 27 and 7 eighths from tip to tip and I'm going to half lap these so just take a pencil and mark the insides where they overlap and this will show you exactly where you need to cut your half laps since the material we're using is one and a half inches wide our half laps will be three quarters of an inch deep or if you did not want to use half laps you could take those lines cut out the center of one board and attach them that way but for this video I'm going to do half laps so I've set my miter saw to cut three quarters of an inch deep like we discussed this can be done on a table saw this can be done with a dado blade but since most miter saws have depth stops this is the fastest way to do it so with all four parts cut we're ready to install but we're not going to we're actually going to set these aside for a bit but before we do that let's go ahead and make sure everything fits the reason why we're not going to install these now is because whenever it gets to the point of installing the hardware you'll have a lot more room to work and now is the time that you'll need to paint or stain your base pick up one of these brushes so while that's drying let's go ahead and make our tabletop again for this build i'm just using two by sixes because everyone can get their hands on those if you have something that's more unique then definitely use that but I will label this part P and you're just gluing this up or if you would like to connect these with pocket holes you can also do that from the back although we're using common construction grade material you can add some distressing techniques that I will be showing you here shortly and make this thing look awesome so for the base I did a black coat of spray paint and went over that with a white coat of paint now I'm just knocking off a little bit of the white paint on the edges and allowing that black to pop through. And now we're going to install our bottom cleats H. Basically these are just supports for the three quarter inch material that you will be putting inside of your rails to use as the floor. And then we'll pre-drill and install these just using a piece of scrap material that's three quarters of an inch thick. And now we're ready for our floorboards I and J. I'm using some three quarter inch reclaimed heart pine that I had laying around. But you could do this exact same thing with some three quarter inch pine from the store or really any three quarter inch material that you have laying around. Then I'm just going to dry fit everything into place to make sure that it's going to fit. And this tool is called positive persuasion. Sometimes you have to use it. And after a little tappity tap, everything looks great. If you use five and a half inch wide material, you will have a half an inch gap in the back. And that's where part J comes in. All right, my favorite part, distressing. When else do you get to beat the crap out of a piece of furniture to make it look better? I honestly think that that is how it got its name distressing de-stressing I'm just going to use a rasp to knock off all of the sharp edges a hatchet to add the hand hewn look and I actually have a full video on distressing so if you like this style of distressing go check that out I'm going to use an old square nail to make it look like this wood was stacked and anything with a super sharp tip just to emulate wormholes yes wormholes when it comes to distressing the more detailed the better and now for that weather worn look we'll use a wire brush or maybe we won't it can be done with a wire brush I've done it plenty of times with a wire brush but this is a lot faster I've just put a wire wheel on an angle grinder the angle grinder will remove the soft woods leaving the hardwoods just like nature does let's say like on an old barn and that is why old barn wood or just antique material in general has such definition and that is the look that you're going for age and now it's time to stain this up and I was actually eager to try out the stain pad for this I had not used it on anything distressed and it rocked it out like always but I'm going to start out with a dark stain called special walnut this is going to set up in all those grooves that I've made and then I'm going to go over the top with a gray stain I call this stain stacking and then I'm going to wipe it right back off this is going to give it that gray hue that you see I like the way that it turned out but if you didn't then do your own thing and this is the look that I was going for the definition the axe marks the old wormholes the nails 
While that's drying, let's go ahead and install our floor from the bottom. Usually I use a clamp to hold these into place, but I don't need a clamp. After all, I'm a pro. And now to install slide mounts K. I've just pre-drilled holes straight up. That way whenever we go to install our top, we can just screw straight into the top from the underneath. These mounts will sit flush with the top and be installed on both sides. Now we can go ahead and attach our slides and I'm just using 12 inch slides. And again, I will link all of the hardware that I use for this build in the description. Make sure that the slide is even with the front leg and that it clears the top rail. It's not nice to point. With the slides installed, we can go ahead and build our drawer. And I'm just seeing what it looks like with the drawer front in. So for the drawer, we will be using parts L, M, N, and O. And we'll start by putting pocket holes in drawer side M. So check this out. Watch my right hand. I'm reaching up for something that's not there. My pencil. I do this at least a hundred times there in a build. And for the drawer bottom O, I'm just using some quarter inch plywood that I have laying around. And I'll be no. Using pan head screws again for this. Just a reminder, never walk barefoot around my shop. And now we'll assemble parts M and N to make our box. And you can cut the drawer bottom slots into these sides if you would like, but I'm just gonna glue and nail them to the bottom. Speaking of, let's go ahead and get that bottom installed. And maybe if I move it a little this way, a little that, yeah. Maybe if I try this, well, eh. Okay, so I measured wrong. So after measuring once and cutting twice, now we can install the bottom. Just using some glue, and like I said, just some brad nails. And then we'll install drawer front in, leaving a half an inch overhang on each side. And with the drawer complete, we can go ahead and install it onto our slides. And after making any adjustments that you need so that it slides smoothly, we can go ahead and attach our top. And we're gonna do this by laying our top upside down on our work surface, making sure everything is square. And then I'll attach the top using screws through the holes that we pre-drilled earlier. Now, if you're not gonna be using the tools to make this open automatically, you can put your X frames on. But I will be using gas struts for this. And I couldn't find one that was long enough that would fit. So I actually made my own using two struts and a coupler. I'll put a link into the description for this as well. Lock Connection actually put together these two struts and this coupler in one listing. For this build, I use an RFID lock but you can actually get the Bluetooth version of this exact same lock. Now we're gonna to have to make a small lock mount for the back of this drawer. Using quarter inch plywood, I'm gonna make a two by six inch piece and a one and a half inch by six inch piece. And then I'm gonna glue those together aligning one edge. This is gonna give me a half of an inch overhang. That little bit of CA glue that I use will allow me to go ahead and install this now. The half of an inch overhang that we left will sit perfectly on the back of the drawer. Just center it up, pre-drill, and we're gonna use some small quarter inch screws. And this is how it should look. So you have your overhang with your thickest part on the back. This will allow our lock pin to match up perfectly with our lock. So let's go ahead and install the lock. So put the drawer back in and cut a five inch by five inch piece of quarter inch plywood that we will use as a lock plate. So the lock itself will actually sit down onto this. So with the drawer closed and the lock pin in the lock, let's go ahead and trace all of this out. Now we know exactly where we need to install this lock plate. Once the lock plate is in, we will fasten down our lock with the hardware provided. And the two little dots that's on the drawer plate is where the lock pin lines up and will attach. We'll pre-drill those and also install the lock pin with the provided screws. Well, looky there, Butterfinger's got his groove back. So while I'm installing this, just as a reminder, do not forget to check out our Patreon community. It is growing like crazy. We have over 100 members now. So thank you guys, you rock. So now that our lock is installed, we'll give it a little test. If everything looks good, and it does, we'll move on to installing our struts. But before we do that, let's go ahead and install our strut bracket Q. Really the only purpose of this board is to hold the little round strut bracket into place and also bring it up closer to the level of the bottom of the drawer. And now we'll install the little round bracket that I was talking about using the three half inch screws provided. Now our second bracket needs to be installed 16 inches apart from the first bracket. Since there was gonna be quite a bit of pressure on these brackets, I wanted to make them a little bit stronger. 
So using the eighth inch plywood, I installed a three inch by an inch and a half piece, 16 inches to center from our back bracket. If you're building from this video and the placement of the bracket on the drawer does not look correct, it's because I ended up making it longer. But as long as you have 16 inches between the two points, you're set. Now we can attach the gas strut and give it a test. Now we can finally install these X frames. I'm just pre-drilling holes from the underneath of the top arms and I'm going to install screws and glue. And then to secure the bottom arms, I'm gonna do that from the bottom. And the cool thing about these types of builds is you can trick them out any way that you would like. I always like to put in the motion activated LED lights, use this Kaizen foam so I can actually customize anything that goes in. And then you have the choice of RFID, Bluetooth, or even biometric fingerprint locks. It doesn't matter what you put in it or how you trick it out. Bottom line is, this thing is cool. So to go into a little more detail about a couple of things, this foam insert that I have inside can be customizable to anything that you want inside of this. And I have no clue where all of the candy went that was in this in the beginning of the video. All right, guys, so I hope that you enjoyed that video. Whether you decide to make this a hidden compartment, whether you decide to make it just an end table, it is a cool build that will sell. And as always, I hope that you have taken something away from this video, anything away from this video, to add to your knowledge as a woodworker, maker, business owner, whatever you want to be or whatever you are working towards right now. For your homework for this week, I want you to go out and create something based on psychology so think back to childhood so think back to nostalgic things what did you enjoy as a child try to recreate that into something that you would enjoy as an adult so that's a deep one so until next time guys get these brain cells fired up you've got this it's in there just unlock it and get creative so yeah so now i'm just going to briefly talk document there's another word document Document. Put that one in the dictionary too. Right beside snoffing. Guys, let's get those brain cells fired up and get psychological. <laughs> get psychological.